in the famous uh, Peanuts cartoon series, Lucy is in business as a psychiatrist. And she has this sign, advice, five cents. Charlie Brown is her client. Charlie Brown woefully asks Lucy's advice on finding a purpose in life. Using the metaphor of a bow of a large boat, Lucy responds, some people go through life with their deck chair facing backwards, looking at where they've been. Then she asks, Charlie Brown, which way is your deck chair facing? Charlie Brown concludes sadly, I really don't know. I've never been able to get my deck chair unfolded. <laughs> Intentional faith development for the Christian is about purpose. It is about being equipped to fulfill our purpose as God has made us. And there is no doubt that God has made us for a purpose. When we are intentionally living to fulfill God's purpose for our lives, then life becomes an exciting adventure as we embody the gospel in our lives. Life without purpose is a life without meaning. In the book of Proverbs, we read, a life devoted to things is a dead life, a stump. A God-shaped life is a flourishing tree. And taking on that, that uh, image, the prophet Jeremiah said something similar. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they go right on producing delicious fruit. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long droughts their sleeves stay green, and they go on producing delicious fruit. You're looking for an image or a vision for your life, or maybe even for our church, there's one. Where are you looking for your purpose in life? Where do you look for joy, hope, and strength? When life storms assail you, a life-threatening illness like cancer, or when your young child is stricken with a health condition that requires lifelong therapy, a stressful workplace, mounting debt, a rumor mill, bent on casting you in a bad light, maybe an uncertain future, discouragement over your life, not going the way you hoped it would, a failed relationship, maybe a, a wayward child, a, a dysfunctional relationship with a sibling, a deeply divided family. Where do you look for your purpose in life? How do you go about developing your spiritual muscles so that life does not overwhelm you? The 42nd Psalm, which was read and which was cast in a beautiful music and sung to us by the choir, is a psalm of lament. It is a plea for help from God as a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come 
and behold the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me continually, Where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? The psalmist happily concludes, Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help, and my God. This after going through the exercise of recalling how I went with the throng and led them in procession to the house of God with glad, glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, a multitude-keeping festival. Friends, intentional faith development is about being part of a community, a small group that explores the mysteries of God through the study of scriptures and how it applies to daily living. FUMC offers a, a host of, of small groups. There's Entheos, Pathfinders, Spirit Seekers, uh, Questers. Uh, there's, there's BUMP, uh, acronym for Babies of United Methodist Parents. There's the Prayer Quilt uh, Ministry Group, United Methodist Women, United Methodist Men, our Boy Scout and Girl Scout Troops, the Filipino Group, Home Group, Living More Simply Group, Turn a Page Book Group, just to name a few. You can visit our church website for more information on, on these groups. You can also call the church office. If none of these <laughs> attracts you I want to say to you, form your own small group. Find other like-minded folks and form a new small group. Create community. There are also short-term and long-term studies that are available. Jesus in the Gospels that, uh, that's being led by uh, Kevin Lucier. And there's also modern parables uh, being led by uh, Teresa Dawes. Being part of a small group is a discipline that can develop and strengthen our spiritual muscles so that we can stand erect and hold our, our heads high in the face of adversity. The psalmist says, I shall again praise him, my help and my God, after being fed by his tears day and night. We become the seed in Jesus' parable of the sower that falls on good soil that came up with a flourish producing a harvest exceeding his wildest dreams. Faith development must be intentional because it requires discipline. Oh, I remember when I was growing up how my parents all said that word one, one too many times. And uh, my siblings and I hated it. You have to make your bed every morning. Uh, you have to wash your clothes if, if you're running out of things to wear. You, you can prepare your own meals. You got to do your homework. Ah, discipline, that word. Too often in life, the temptation is to take it easy, to relax, and to take the path of, of least resistance. That is a message we are constantly confronted with in our culture. But you know, without faith, intentional faith development, we cannot find our God-designed purpose because the only way we can discover that is to have a relationship with God in Jesus Christ. Our greatest desire 
is to know God. We human beings are driven to believe. The problem comes when we believe in all the wrong things that will not be there for us to sustain us when we go through the fiery trials of life. Paul, in his letter to the Philippian Christians, recognized the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. I want to know Christ, he said, and the power of his resurrection. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. When we cut God out of the purpose-driven equation in life, we try to find fulfillment in, in something other than God. The problem is that we can never get enough to fill what the philosopher Blaise Pascal called our God-shaped vacuum. Sports can't do it. Money can't do it. Sex can't do it. Fame can't do it. Nor can power. St. Augustine understood this well when he wrote, You have made us for yourself, and our heart is restless until it rests in you. Intentional faith development is essential if FUMC of Pasadena is to have purpose. We cannot lead anyone, let alone the larger community out there or the world, to where we haven't been. We cannot share what we do not have. All our efforts at inviting others to be a part of our community will sound hollow if people do not catch a big, bold, and powerful, exciting vision they can be a part of. And that vision we pray for every week when we pray, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. A faith community committed no less to making heaven on earth. As Christians intentionally develop their faith, they discover the adventure that is making heaven on earth. And there are choices to be made in life about what we will spend our time on doing and how we will use our time. Intentional faith development marks our choices as followers of Jesus Christ, affirming that in this life we will not go our own way, but go with Jesus Christ. There was a parishioner who, uh, though very faithful in his weekly worship attendance, never attended Sunday school or one of the several weekly evening studies being offered. Over time, his pastor managed to uh, strong arm him in a pastorally loving way, of course, into taking disciple. Uh, Bible study. And there are many of you who have taken disciple. Let me, let me have a show of hands of those who have gone through disciple. We've, we've got quite a few. That's great. He came the first night reluc reluctantly, uh, say, saying boldly to all the other participants that he was far too busy to do all the reading required and that he received all the Bible he needed in, in the sermons each week. Obviously, I'm not his pastor. Um, his pastor asked him in front of the group 
if he would agree to attend the study for a month, do all the assigned reading during that time, and complete the lesson each week. In other words, he, if he promised to be intentional in giving his best to the group and, and to the experience, his pastor promised him that he would not protest if he wanted to quit after a month. After four weeks of disciple, this parishioner not only chose to continue for the entire 34 weeks, but he also readily signed up the following autumn for Disciple 2, and then the year after for Disciple 3. And he eventually moved forward in his, in his faith development to facilitate future disciple groups. Intentional faith development had opened up the world of, of discipleship for this brother of ours in a way he had never experienced before. And that's, that's the potential. That's, that's what's in store. That's what may be waiting for you, for each one of us, when we become part of a small group. This parishioner went from being content in his faith to being hungry for God. He truly exhibited what the psalmist said so many centuries ago, as a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. Our hearts are restless until they find rest in God. So church, unfold your deck chair and make sure it's facing inward as part of a circle of fellow seekers of truth. Let that circle be porous enough so that newcomers can always find a place. A maturing follower of Jesus gets really good at being radically hospitable, passionate in worship, takes risks in mission and service, and ex is extravagantly generous with his or her time, talent, and treasure. Amen. <laughs>